again, fight fans. This is Jason Burgles for SureDog.com, and I am joined tonight by not just a defending champion, but the rare MMA millionaire on New Year's Eve in New York City. This man will look to be the first two-time PFL featherweight world champion when he takes on the mysterious fighter to be named later, something we will get into shortly because we're not we're still unsure about that whole thing. But that man is... The party himself, Lance Palmer. Lance, Mr. Millionaire, sir, what is up? And thanks for giving me some time in the lead up to going for $2 million status. What's going on, man? I'm good. I'm good. Now, I, of course, I have a whole bunch of questions for you. You know, when I talked to you last season uh, and, and, and also going into this year, you had one of the most honest approaches to winning the million dollars. You saw it as, you know, great reward, but not a life changer, especially after Uncle Sam came for his share. Now, a year removed from winning that million <laughs> and heading into a chance to do it again. Talk to me about how that money, you know, did better your life on some level. It can be, you know, it could be a small scale of better to you. Maybe it's a long term term thing you it better do you you know talk to me about how you you use as much as you can and and how it really helped better your life and why you have a unique knowledge going into this championship money on why winning that money is so important yeah i think the biggest difference uh in my life from that was just being able to set ourselves up for our future whether it's uh investing in the long term and investing for retirement and being able to, you know, invest into things like mortgage and stuff like that, being able to put more, more money into our future was the main thing. And, um, I mean, when it comes down to it, you have to have somebody that's smart to help you with that also. So you do have to pay less to uncle Sam, like you were saying a second ago. So mm. a lot of that is stuff that, you know, I didn't come from money. So I had, you know, people, multiple people helping me in different areas of that mm. to where, my money's making money for me. And, you know, the people that the people that you see that are multi-billionaires nowadays are all people that have multiple revenue streams and a lot of it's residual income as well. So that's really where, where the money is at nowadays, whether it's in real estate or whether you're doing it elsewhere. And that's kind of what I've started to learn. And now that I have a little bit of liquid income to be able to do that investing, um, it's been, it's been fun. It's been a learning process. I'm always somebody that's willing to learn new things. And, and obviously, you know, I love, love the idea of, um, uh, being able to invest in my future and stuff like that it definitely builds equity and, and, uh, it builds a future for not only me and my family, but also, you know, my children in the future and college funds and stuff like that is all things that you don't really think about until you get to the point where you're like, Oh damn, it's too late. Now I already have kids. And <laughs> so luckily we don't have kids yet, but that's something that we're starting to plan for now. And, um, financially that's helped us out a little bit there being able to put a little bit of money away to start that. And, you know, hopefully the end of this year, we'll be able to put more money away for that. Very nice. Now, you are one of just three guys who will be returning to the finals, and only you and Natan Schultz are, you know, guys that have a chance to, to repeat as champions. As we saw in your year two, year two with a bunch of guys uh, missing weight, and, and especially in the playoffs with key entries, changing matchups up in advance and on the fly, the PFL season, it, it isn't easy. It's a, it's a hard, you know, road to take. How helpful was it for you having been through a championship year already? You know, were there any adjustments? adjustments you made this season that were made directly from things you learned from going through it all last year the crazy thing from last year is i'm very um structured and meticulous when it comes to everything and i think that's my wrestling background just being able to to kind of know exactly how i want something done how to go about it you know basically dream it plan it do it you know put the structure together for it and so last year's season worked out to a T of how I planned mm. and how I trained for the two fights in one night and how I just kind of prepared each camp and uh, from training to recovery to doing the right thing for the entire format of it all worked out perfectly and everything went to, you know, basically exact how I wanted it to go. And, um, and so this year wasn't much different for adjustments other than, you know, adjusting my coaching staff where, you know, I finally was able to come out and train with Mark Henry and Frankie Edgar and those guys for this year. And that's something I've been wanting to do for a few years, but um, I wasn't able to have it accumulate until uh, this March. And I want to talk to you about that. I'm glad you brought up, cause you know, you have been 
at least for someone who follows your, you know, social media and stuff like that, you've been a bit of a traveling man training wise. It, it would seem, you know, when I talked to you last year, you tell me about how, um, Lee, you know, you left alpha male, you worked at extreme couture, which surely seemed to work as you won the championship, you know, being based out of extreme couture for this season. I've seen you, like you mentioned, you've been working with guys like Frankie, Mark Henry here, in, you know, in New Jersey area, but also I've seen you work with the guys, in the training lab, like Juan Archuleta, Sam, Sam Calavita. Mm -hmm. Um, some fighters don't like change when the formula seems successful what made you want to tra change things up or like you said uh, a few minutes ago what made you always want to train there and why do it now when things seem to work so well for you doing it out of extreme couture last season i think the main difference was seeing how mark works so well with a guy like frankie they've been together 15 years and a guy who has a wrestling background who's basically turned himself into one of the most well-rounded mixed yeah. martial artists I've ever seen yeah. in the game. And that's that's more of what interested me, and it was my wrestling pedigree is already there. My ground game is great, but Ricardo Almeida was a guy who who was a great jiu-jitsu artist, got into the UFC. He's he's done it at the highest level. He can do – he can teach MMA grappling, which is very hard for some people to do, and as well as – uh, coach Casey Halstead in Las Vegas, who I still use in my corner as well. So it's, it's, it's more of, it wasn't really that I needed a change. It was just more that I wanted to keep improving. And last year, 2018 season, Timor Valley of who's one of my teammates. Now he was at, in the featherweight season until he got injured right before the playoffs. So he's a guy that I train with now every day. Mm. But before, it was one of those things where I couldn't train with him because he wasn't, you know, he was at Mark's gym and I didn't want to step on any toes and move there. Mm. So that was the main reason I didn't go in 2018. Um, but I brought on Coach Cal last year okay. through the training lab for my nutrition and strength and conditioning. And just his, I mean, the guy's nothing short of a genius when it comes to nutrition and um, algorithms of, you know, peaking at the right time, the correct recovery. And I mean, it's, there's no, there's really no secret to what he does that he's, I mean, he's, he's got to be one of the best in that, in that area. So I brought him on last year in the fall. And then, um, so that's not really that new. We're, we're going on our, you know, second title fight together, okay. which is cool. And, uh, you know, the biggest difference was Mark Henry's style of boxing for MMA is the main thing that attracted me to New Jersey. And I've talked to uh, several guys that have worked with Calavita, like Sayad Awad, uh, Juan Archuleta, Georgie Carahanian, and when they po they posted too, and I'm always fascinated by Calavita's, like that gym that he has you guys work out of, like that, not the gym, but the, the garage gym he has you work out of, which is so odd when you see, you know, fighters like yourself working at these fantastic facilities, and you guys, you know, look ripped and everything, and sweating, and like, it looks like the hardest training I've ever seen in my life like is is calavita's garage gym is it just do you look at it when you go there and do you feel like a, a pain in your stomach like oh this is gonna be a long day you know is it am i just fooled by the pictures or is it really some seriously hard training in that garage there's nothing like training in the garage and that's what it's made to do it's made to basically break you and, and rebuild you wow. and that's kind of you know that's kind of how it is from a scientific standpoint you know it's like you're smart about it you're not going in there just beating yourself up just to do it he has a reason for every workout we do he has a system for you know each workout of we work out twice a week and each workout has its own reason and depending on how far you are out from a fight i mean he's everything he does is with a purpose and that's that's the thing that's amazing about it there's no guesswork to it and that's what i wanted to do is take the guesswork out of my training out of my nutrition out of my strength and conditioning like there's everything is exactly where i need it to be and that's that's why I'm happy with it. You are in a really unique situation heading into these championships. Like I mentioned a little bit in the opening, you know, when the playoffs were over, you were set to face Daniel Pineda. However, he was flagged for a possible PD in Nevada after a Nevada drug exam, which led to news you were instead going to face Alex Gilpin, a man you have already been twice this season. Then... We recently found out Pineda will appeal his positive test to the athletic commission in Las Vegas in a couple a couple weeks before the actual championship. First, 
what are your thoughts on this whole thing? And second, have you been training for both men and their various skills? Or are you the type that doesn't really agonize over what your opponent can and is going to do? And you pretty much just worry about what you, you have to do and what you have to execute that night. So honestly, you could face the Hulk if you had to. Yeah, I prepare for anyone. Like when I fought Almeida in the quarterfinals, that was on 24 hours notice mm. because the other right, guy didn't right. make weight. So it's it's for me, it's more of bringing my best package to the fight. It's not, I mean, I know each person that you fight has a different style. They have different things that they bring to the table. But when it comes down to fight night, I have to, I still have to do my best of what I can do and not worry about who's going to step across the cage in a way. So the only thing that bothers me about it is that they waited till, you know, they're waiting till December 18th for this hearing. They have to give them due process, which I agree with. Right. I mean, that's fine. But what's the point of having a lot of testing if, if you're going to be able to appeal it and then fight and might as well not do drug testing. If you're just going to be able to appeal something and still fight with an adverse drug test, you know, um, uh, I could go, I mean, I guess I could go on and on about it. I, I'd love to have, I'd love to have a new opponent yeah. because I fought Gilpin twice this year. But, but also when you think about it, um, fighting somebody who's had an adverse or failed mm. test, whatever it may be, it's still – that's why we do the drug testing. Yeah. Don't do the drug testing if you're going to just let people jump back in, regardless of what the results are. If you have an adverse test, that means something's not going on right, or that means you're trying to cover something up, or that means you're taking something that's covering whatever you were taking before that. Um, and, you know, the tainted, tainted supplement stuff, like, if you know what you're taking, you know what you're taking. Like, I mean, you got to use reputable companies if you're going to take – take supplements or creatine or whatever the heck it is it's like i understand that that happens but there was no talk of a tainted supplement it was uh you know whatever it is that the test was flagged and you know and that was it like you can appeal it all you want but i mean we saw we saw a different looking person from if you've watched his past fights so mm. the, i mean what am i going to do argue that oh he's not taking something i mean i'm not going to say he is taking something either but I don't want to fight a guy who's had a flag drug test and then have to fight him 10 weeks after that because who knows? It, what if he appealed that and then is still taking whatever it is and, you know, and it doesn't, you know, oh, it, it could still be like the whole picogram thing with Jones. Like that, that shit could be in his system for 10 <laughs> years and they could say that. Yeah, yeah. So, and now you saw it as doing looser drug testing for just because of that situation. Mm -hmm. It's like, this is a slippery slope that we're coming down yep. and, uh, with the whole drug testing and MMA, we already knew that was going to be a disaster from the beginning because everybody, like Nate Diaz said, everybody's taking steroids. So. <laughs> and I want to ask, I, I, <laughs> I want to ask you too because are you going to? I mean, sometimes the the hearings there are, are public, but at least someone's always there live tweeting it often. Are you going to be closely watching that hearing on the 18th to let's say he does get you know approved to fight you just to kind of hear what their excuse is what nevada offers as the reason he tested positive like just for your own understanding and let's say it you know it doesn't you know doesn't pass the smell test for you but you do have to fight them are do you have the ability to go to pfm like well I i'm not comfortable with this fight like this fight doesn't really work for me you know are you allowed to say that or you kind of just have to deal with it whatever happens uh, I mean, I, I'm down. I'm down for whatever. I'm a fighter through and through. Like I've I've been through adversity before. I understand the due the due process part of it, but I also disagree with the fact that um, that if somebody's gonna fail their test and you're still gonna give them an opportunity to jump back in, like I just I don't understand where their heads at with it. Due process is always something. It's right. like, but. Any other situation, you're guilty until proven innocent, and I don't, I don't see how you could be. A, the test is a test. Like the blood, the blood or the urine doesn't lie. Like, well, how are you? What are you gonna like? What's your? I don't know. Like, if I was going in there, what am I gonna say? Like, I, I wasn't taking whatever this was, mm -hmm. or, you know, like what? <laughs> what's he gonna do that's gonna overturn it? Um, but yeah, I mean, I've already been, I've already not been happy with PFL about the way they've handled it because they haven't really been open with me about what the test result was. And mm, wow, it's not even in the media at all. And it just said, you know, they had three other guys fail drug tests during the semi or during the playoffs and all those guys have stuff 
have their stuff online as through the media, but he doesn't. Mm. It's all kind of fishy to me from the beginning. So I'm just kind of taking it in stride. And whoever I have to fight on New Year's Eve, I'll fight. But I think what's the point of the drug testing if they're not going to follow through with it? If you were to face him, let's say everything works out right. It's very clean. There's nothing for you to worry about or be concerned about. You know, what makes him an interesting and even maybe a dangerous opponent for you? And, you know, he, he had, like you mentioned, you know, some good wins in the season, stuff like that. Hopefully it was clean wins. But, you know, what makes fighting him interesting? Is it simply just not to fight Alex Gilpin a third time? Yeah, I think that's it. I think it's just a new <laughs> challenge. A, a new, uh, yeah. like, Every time you fight somebody new, there's the like the motivation of like, man, this is cool. I never fought this guy. Like, yeah. it'll be cool to get in there and scrap. But also, when you think about it too, it's like he's Pineda's had the six wins after he was, um, you know, on the lower level shows and stuff like that. But this this kind of uh, this kind of away from that a little bit, knowing that there was a flag, you mm -hmm. know, a flag drug test. Like, yeah. okay, well. You know, all his wins are finishes, and that's great. Like, he's a finisher if he wins. But people forget the dude's got, like, 13 losses. Yeah. So, it's like, like he can be finished. He can be submitted. He could be TKO'd. He could be knocked out. So, a lot of people are taking that away. All they're showing is that, yeah, he's dangerous, and he can put guys away. But when it comes down to it, he can break and he can give up too. And I, that's what I'm going to be there for if I do fight him. If things don't change for Pineda and you do have to face Gilpin, is there a worry at all about motivation? Now, of course, you are a pro's pro. The money, the title are great motivations. But for a guy like you that has fought for this long, won titles, you know, the challenge, you just said, the challenge of who you face is important, getting you energized for a fight, especially something new. This guy, as talented as he, as he is, you beat him decisively twice already. You know, I think it would be pretty human to, to have a lack of interest to do it a third time. And not even, like, a third time in five years. A third time in, like, less than six months. Like, is, yeah. is there any worry, like, oh, God, how do I get up for this fight? Like, you know, is that? No, not at all. I think the, the thing for me is there's more motivation because I want to get a finish on this guy. Mm -hmm. I, I fought him twice. I know how tough he is. I know he'll hang in there. I know he'll... He can take some good shots. I know he's always going to be there, and he's always going to fight back. He's always going to bring pressure, um, and I know that's how he is. It's similar to Siler, who I fought last right. year in the finals. That's a guy who you can never count mm -hmm. out for five rounds. Like, I wasn't sure of my win until after the, the bell rang at the end of the fifth round last mm -hmm. year because that's a guy that we've seen him get rocked or get hurt and end up submitting a guy or knocking the guy out, so – that's always something you can't, you can never count anyone out. And my motivation this time is, okay, I need to go out there and get the finish. I need, I need to do what I haven't done to him yet is finish him. So that's kind of my motivation for that. And I'm always looking to get the finish, but a lot of people don't realize that I'm not going to go out of my way and risk right. a win <laughs> to put myself in position yeah. to finish. So if it's a decision, it's a decision, but better believe that i'm trying to get the finish out there if you were to win the million again do you feel there would be you know the same drive to do it a third time you know at 32 you are in prime years is fighting just about setting up your family and your future like you mentioned earlier at this point from here on out or with back-to-back -back championships is there not much left to for you to prove in the pfl featherweight division is there is there an interest if you can you know have the ability to, to try out other leagues, the Bellator or, 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 you know, the UFC, are you allowed to get out of it if you're a champion? Or even if you can't, is there maybe an interest going up to lightweight, like a new adventure, a new journey by doing that? Or you're like, fuck it, I'm going to be three-time. We're going to get these $3 million. Like, what is your, you know, what do you think you, you might be feeling if you do it again? Well, I feel like the way everything's going right now with my health and how I feel and everything's healthy and, you know, doing well for me, um, I want to, I want to compete till at least 35, okay. you know, as long as everything's good and going well. But as far as, you know, have I, I felt like I've come, you know, accomplished everything I want to No, I feel like there's always more. And, uh, the UFC is coming to Columbus, Ohio in March. Uh, and my buddy Cody Garbrandt's going to be on that card. So that's something that's definitely interesting to me, but I know that the UFC isn't going to pay me what PFL's paying me so that's the only at this point it's setting up my financial future and that's my main goal that's what i'm doing it i love fighting and i'm also doing it to set up my future so if it doesn't if it doesn't align with um setting me up financially for the rest of my life then 
it probably doesn't make sense. So, I mean, we're we're in negotiation with with a new deal with PFL, and we haven't gotten there yet. But uh, my main focus is just to go out and get this win on December 31st, and then uh, weigh my options from there. I mean, I I'm a betting man, and if I have to bet on myself every time, I will. And I did that during the playoffs, and I'm willing to do that for the finals too. Now let's say, you know, there's always back channels. We over here, like in other sports and free agency, especially now in baseball, there's back channels. Oh, they heard from somebody here or whatever. Like let's say you through a back channel, you hear, okay, the UFC will give you what you think you deserve, and you know, could you like confirm or not? Because you said you were in negotiations. I remember when I talked to Carlos Silva in season one, he talked about that, like champions and I think runners ups are automatically signed on for season two or the next season. Is that the same with you or as a runner up or if you win the title, are you kind of automatically have to fight in PFL season three or is there some leeway where you have to renegotiate or have the ability to go fight elsewhere if you wanted to? Well, technically right now I'm not in a contract with PFL for the future. So like last year, that was – I already – you have to go through the regular season mm -hmm. of the next year. And that was already accomplished, and we didn't sign a new deal in October. So, like, right now I'm just – you know, this is a one-fight deal on New Year's Eve, basically. I'm, I'm doing that, and that's that's what I'm doing right now. But uh, I, I have a feeling that – you know, I feel like I've, I've proved my worth with PFL, and I think that it's uh, something that they – would want to do to work with me again next year and, and in the future and other opportunities as far as, you know, maybe commentating and things like that in the future when I am done fighting for them. But when it comes down to it right now, it's, it's gotta, it's gotta make sense for me and my financial future. And, um, you know, like what you're saying is the finalists automatically go into the next year. Yeah. You have the ability to, uh, you're not obligated as a finalist, mm, but okay. the, uh, the championship clause from last year was through this regular season. So that's ah, done. Okay. And then, you know, I think, uh, you know, my manager does a really good job of not getting me stuck in something that doesn't make sense. So we're, uh, we're in a good place right now. I, I don't really think about it too much. I'm just focused on this fight right now. And then, I mean, you, you'd be, uh, I'd be lying to you if I told you that I wasn't excited that UFC is coming to Columbus. <laughs> I but, could tell. I could um, tell a little bit. <laughs> fi financially, it wouldn't make sense for no. me, but to be, you know, the thing with me fighting in the UFC, it's got to make sense financially because they're not going to put me against some scrub. I'm going to be fighting in the top 10. They're, they did that with Gaethje. They did that with Marlon Marias, mm -hmm. both guys who I was a champion yep. with in World Series of Fighting. Mm -hmm. So those guys didn't get layups. You know, they fought. T I mean, Al he fought Alvarez and, um, shoot, who else? He fought Alvarez, Michael Johnson. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you name the top guys that Gaethje fought right out of the gate, and it's top five guys. Yep. So I wouldn't expect anything less, but I'd ex at least expect to get paid like one of those guys <laughs> and get paid, you know, what I'm yep. worth. And I think, uh, I think that's kind of, you know, where we may run into some stuff because I'm getting paid – I'm getting paid really well for my regular season fights through PFL, but, um, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm worth a little bit more than what I am getting paid right now, and hopefully we can work that out with PFL.